OK, so one more example I want to go over with you. And I'll try to do this as quickly as possible, um, because it is going to be kind of a long problem that we're going through. So we're gonna, we want to add and subtract our rational expressions. And remember, when doing our rational expressions, we need to find our least common denominator, which we notice we do not have the same denominator. So we need to find our least common denominator. But when doing that, we always want to make sure we simplify each rational expression. So you see that this cannot be simplified, this cannot be simplified. But this one, we can simplify it. So if I do my LCD, uh, no, let's not do the LCD yet. Let's just go and simplify x squared minus 25. Well, we know that's a difference to squares, which can be simplified into x minus 5 and then x plus 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite this x minus 5 times x plus 5. The reason why I'm going to rewrite that, so therefore I can kind of easily see what my LCD is going to be. So therefore, I can see that x minus 5 times x plus 5, well, they already share an x minus 5. So when determining my LCD, I can say my LCD is just going to be x minus 5 times x plus 5, and then plus x plus 3. All right, So that's going to be my least common denominator. So what I need to do is I need to make every single uh, rational expression have that exact same denominator. So I need to multiply it by the terms that are going to give me that denominator. So what we'll do is we'll look at here on the left side. We see over here I already have x minus 5 and x plus 5. Therefore, I need to multiply by x plus 3 on the top and on the bottom. Over here, I only have x minus 5. So therefore, I need to multiply by an x plus 5 and an x plus 3. And make sure this is in parentheses as well. And also notice that it's being multiplied by negative, which is going to be very, very important. Over here, I have x plus 5. So therefore, I need to multiply by an x minus 5 and an x plus 5, which we actually can go back to our difference of two squares and write it like this. You can write the x minus 5, the x plus 5. But we already know when we multiply those out, uh, it gives us x squared minus 25. All right. So now we know that now, by multiplying each all of these, we're going to have our common denominator. This is just a perfect square trinomial. So that's not going to be too much for us. Here is just destroy the property. It seems the biggest problem that we're going to have is multiplying all of these three trinomials. So I'm actually going to do this separately right now and then erase it and just kind of write down the answer um, and go ahead and erase it. So what I have is three different trinomials. When doing multiplying three different trinomials, we want to make sure we just do two of them at a time. So I'm going to forget about the negative symbol right now. And I'm just going to apply FOIL to my first two uh, binomials. So therefore, I have x times x. So this is all being multiplied by negative. So it's going to be x times x, which is x squared, x times 5, which is a positive 5x, x times negative 1, which is a negative x, and negative 1 times 5, which is a negative 5. Okay. Then I can simplify that into x squared uh, plus 4x minus 5 times x plus 3. All right. Now we have a trinomial multiplied by a binomial. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to apply distributive property. So we need to make sure we multiply each term in our binomial to our trinomial. So now what I'll do is I'll have so a negative. So I have x times x squared, which is going to leave us with x cubed. x times 4x is going to be a positive 4x squared. x times negative 5 is going to be a negative 5x. Then I multiply the threes. And what I can do is, since I'm going to be adding them, I can kind of put it down below. 3 times x squared is going to be a 3x squared. 3 times 4x is going to be a positive 12x. And 3 times negative 5 is going to be a negative 15. Then I can combine my terms. So I'll have x cubed plus 7x squared, let's see, uh, plus a 7x minus 15. Then, now in my last final step, I can distribute my negative sign. So therefore, that's going to give me a negative x cubed minus 7x squared minus 7x plus 15. And that is going to be my numerator for all of this multiplication. You can see how much extra work it really took. So let's kind of write this out real quick. So therefore, so now I can have. Uh, I know that this is. So if I'm going to rewrite my numerator, 
I know that over here I'm going to have a negative x cubed minus 7x squared minus 7x plus 15. Okay. And since we know our common denominator is going to be our LCD, which is x minus 5 times x plus 5 times x plus 3. All right. So now let's go and do a little bit of the, what we like to say, maybe the easier math to do. Here is a binomial times a binomial. There are two binomials that are exactly the same, so it's going to produce a perfect square trinomial, which will be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Over here, we're just applying distributive property. 3 times x squared is going to be a 3x squared. 3 times negative 5 is going to be a negative 75. All right. So now, let's just combine our like terms. So we look at our x cubed. We only have 1x cubed, so, and it's negative. So we have negative x cubed. Then we go and look at our squareds. So our squareds is going to be x squared, negative 7x squared, and a positive 3x squared. So therefore, that's going to produce a negative 3x squared. Then we look at the 6x's, or just our linear terms. So we have a positive 6x, and we have a negative 6x. So that's just going to produce negative x. Then we look at 9 plus 15, which is 24, and then minus 71, which is going to be a negative 51. That's going to be all over our LCD, which is x minus 5 times x plus 5 times x plus 3. Now, to determine our constraints, we take our denominator and we set it equal to 0. Well, we can set each one of these factors equal to 0, and you'll be able to see that x is pretty obvious, cannot equal 5, negative 5, and negative 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the constraints as well as adding and subtracting your multiple terms.